Hello everybody. Today we will discuss basics of chest x-ray. Goal for today's lecture would be to see how anatomical structures are seen on a chest x-ray, how to evaluate the cardiac silhouette and how to evaluate the lung anatomy on a chest x-ray. The intention of this x-ray is it is intended for the people who are wanting to begin interpreting a chest x-ray and how to form an approach for day-to-day -day reading of chest x-ray. This would be intended for all medical students, uh, first year residents and uh, or physicians who want to know the basics about chest x-rays. So let us see the first slide today. Now if you look at the first slide today, I want you to know the meaning of the word PA view. I am sure we have all written this on our uh, requisition forms, chest x-ray PA view. PA view means posterior anterior. Now, what does this mean? Patient has to stand, stand facing the film, shoulders are rotated anteriorly and chin up so that the apex are seen better. So, patient would stand chin up facing the film and shoulders are rotating forward. Now, a very common question that physicians often ask me is that, sir, how do we differentiate between a PA view and a AP view? Please understand. Look at the scapula always. In a PA view, because the patient is standing erect, we are able to ask him to rotate his shoulders forward. Are you able to follow this? He has rotated his shoulders forward, so scapula is removed from the lung field. In contrast, if you look at an AP film, you will always see, because the patient is lying down, so you will see that the scapulae are overlying the lung feeds. They are overlapping it. But here you can easily see this is a PA view because scapula has been moved out of the lung field. Now, second thing that you often see is what is a lateral view. Now, let us see how a lateral view is done. In a lateral view, patient uh, puts his arms up, film is on one side and the x-ray beam is coming from the other side. This is a lateral view. And we all get confused when you get a requisition form which says lateral decubitus. A lateral decubitus film is done for to detect pleural effusion. To, whenever you have minimal pleural effusion, so you advise a patient to get a lateral decubitus view which can detect even up to 25 ml of pleural fluid on a lateral decubitus film. Now, it becomes confusing for a medical graduate sometimes to understand how lateral decubitus is done. Once you see this image, things will become clearer. Lateral decubitus view is done with the film in front of the chest. Patient is lying on his side. He is on one side lying down. Lateral is means side. Decubitus means lying down. And film in front of him. And please understand what I am trying to say. It is very, very important to realize X-ray beam is horizontal. Now, X-ray beam, that means it is going parallel to the table. It is a horizontal beam film and you will get an image like this. This image would look like a PA view but the patient is lying down so pleural fluid would settle down. So lateral film is on one side, rays are coming, x-rays are coming from the other side. But in lateral decubitus, patient is lying down, film is in front of him and the x-ray beam is horizontal. So lateral decubitus is a horizontal beam x-ray. So now let us look at how the lobes of the lung are seen on a chest x-ray. What I will do is I will take a PA view and a lateral view side by side and try and show you how they are placed anatomically on a chest film. This is the right sided upper lobe. Now this is how it is seen on a PA view limited by the horizontal fissure and on the side of it you, you can identify trachea, this is the aortic knuckle diaphragm and this is the upper lobe on the opposite on the lateral view. Now how do we identify middle lobe? Now this is middle lobe on a chest x-ray PA and a lateral view. The key thing to understand here is there are two key features which we very commonly use in day-to-day x-ray reporting. Middle lobe is abutting the cardiac silhouette, abutting the cardiac silhouette on a PA view and if you look at it carefully on the lateral view, it is placed anteriorly. It is very, very important to understand that middle lobe is an anteriorly placed structure. And similar to heart, 
even in our mediastinum heart is a anteriorly placed structure so middle lobe is abutting the heart both in the pa view dimension as well as in the lateral view dimension so this is the fact that we use in the sailhout sign very often you get a question or you get a patient where the cardiac border is not seen on the it is obscured on the chest film and we say this is middle lobe pathology why because only the middle lobe is abutting the cardiac sailhout anatomically and it is well seen on this image that it is a anteriorly placed structure now let us identify the lower lobe now this is how your lower lobe is placed on a chest x ray and if i go back and compare now please see the lateral film please keep your eye on the lateral film middle lobe is anterior while lower lobe is a posterior structure lower lobe is a posterior structure so lower lobe pneumonias or lower lobe pathologies do not obscure the cardiac border because they are not in anatomical con connect is that making sense to you this is how we use the sailhout sign to localize lung pathologies on a pa view film now please see this middle lobe and lower lobe they are overlapping each other on a pa view film if i do not have a lateral view it is difficult to identify a middle lobe pathology from a lower lobe only way i can identify is if i look at the sailhout sign so this is the basis of the sailhout sign now let us look at the left upper lobe now please see left upper lobe is a larger lobe why it is larger than the right side because lingula is the part of the left upper lobe left upper lobe is further divided into a upper division and a lingula division so this is how the left upper lobe is placed sometimes when you have a left upper lobe collapse it is difficult to identify a left upper lobe collapse on a chest x ray because sometimes what happens the lower lobe the superior segment of the lower lobe over inflates and it interposes between the aortic shadow and the collapsed upper lobe and so you are it looks hyperlucent and it difficult to identify this has been called as luft seichel sign luft seichel sign which is a sign of left upper lobe collapse luft means air seichel means sickle now let us look at the lingula now if i'm if i further divide the upper lobe into the lingula segment and lingula segment and the upper division now lingula is anatomically on the uh, on the left side similar to middle lobe so lingular pathologies will obscure the left cardiac border lingular pathologies will obscure the left cardiac border now this is the upper division of the left upper lobe and lingula upper division okay and this is the lower lobe this is the left lower lobe so now we are easily placed that lower lobe is a posterior structure so if i see now i'll come to the normal x rays and i'll show you how this is placed now let us identify the cardiac sailhout now this is the posterior i am i'm trying to build the cardiac shadow from posterior to anterior i'll show you how it is placed and so that we can identify what structures are forming what part of the cardiac borders on the chest x ray this is the posterior most part of the heart this is the left atrium you have to note very carefully that the left atrium does not form a part of any cardiac border but there is a out pouching from the left atrium called as the appendage called as the auricle which forms a small part of the left cardiac border now please remember this auricle is very important for us radiologists to look at particularly in patients with rheumatic heart disease when in mitral valvular disease the left atrium starts to enlarge the auricle enlarges it bulges and this leads to the straightening of the left heart border so please remember this is the left cardiac border and a part of the left cardiac border is made up by made by left atrial appendage now if i go beyond and see what if i add one more structure now what is there right atrium so this is how anatomically cardiac structures are placed on a chest x ray this is the left atrium appendage the right atrium so the important thing to understand here is the right cardiac border is mainly made up of right atrium right cardiac border on a chest x ray is mainly contributed by the right atrium and on this side the lung 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 is so this is the middle lobe so middle lobe abutting the right atrium on the cardiac side now we are getting some anatomical orientation so if i add one more anatomical structure here now 
this is the left ventricle so many times you will see a question or you will see a doubt in your mind that what is this structure this part of the chest x-ray cardiac border is contributed by the left ventricle left ventricle okay now let us add one more layer to this so this is the right ventricle and now can you see it in the three dimensions very very important left atrium posterior most part auricle then we have the right atrium then we have the left ventricle and the right ventricle another important thing is how is the heart placed on the lateral view let us see the lateral view this is the lateral view now very often you'll see this lateral view this is the sternum i can see the vertebra heart a little bit about you know you can see the aortic arch aortic shadow descending aorta now please see now what is this cardiac border what what is placed anteriorly on a lateral view this is the right ventricle right ventricle so anterior part on the lateral shadow is made up of the right ventricle so suppose somebody has a right ventricular enlargement what would happen it would lead to obliteration of the retrosternal space so this is the sternum this is the retrosternal space so please remember this is the right ventricle this part is the left ventricle and the posterior most part is contributed by the left atrium now if you look at the aortic shadow aortic shadow and the relation of left atrium suppose somebody has a enlarged left atrium so it can displace the descending aorta you know the sign this has been called as the bedford sign so please remember the anatomical relations and this is the vertebra so esophagus would be somewhere here so on a barium film what do we see posterior displacement of esophagus if somebody has a enlarged left atrium so once we know how structures are anatomically placed let us look at a normal chest film and make a plan now what i'll be sharing with you is my own approach the what i use for my day to day x ray reporting now i want you to understand there's a difference between a radiologist reading a chest film and a medical student or a medical graduate looking at a chest film now what is that difference difference is that as a radiologist i have a approach i go step by step and i look at everything before i come to a conclusion while a medical graduate usually would look at the immediately go and focus at the pathology so if i again repeat somebody who is untrained to read chest x ray would try and find pathologies while a radiologist would look at in a in a structured manner i will show you my approach my approach is inside out what do i do is i first look at the trachea I first look at the trachea trachea is usually central or slightly towards the right now can you tell me why a trachea is towards the right why because there is aorta sitting here which pushes it physiologically towards right i look at the caliber is it normal is it dilated i i look for any foreign body normal position then i at the same time i look at the spinous process the medial end of the clavicle are supposed to be equidistant from the spinous process why that is why uh, why why you look at this because this is how i get to know if there is rotation or not if the patient is standing in a correct position this should be equidistant if the patient is rotated then the distance would not be same so i look at i look for any technical factors like rotation i look for the trachea tracheal position at the same time i also look at the right paratracheal stripe now i want you to appreciate the fact that the lungs are abutting the trachea here and usually the space is 2 to 3 mm not more than that if the space is more than that i think of lymphadenopathy or fluid in this area or some pathology some tumor so this i at the same time i look at the paratracheal stripe i look at the trachea position rotation paratracheal stripe then this is how the trachea divides into the cranial angle okay so now i look at the mediastinum normally this is how the mediastinum should look like if there is some widening then i my mind would start thinking of mediastinal masses or any lymphadenopathy or any problem with the mediastinal structure so you look at if the mediastinal borders are okay if they are widened or not this is how the aortic contour is this part of the ascending aorta arch 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 and the knuckle where it is converting into the descending aorta so i look at this thing and in my mind i know that the the aortic knuckle that we see here is a posterior structure this is the part of the aortic arch where aortic arch is converting into the descending aorta so i know if this border is still outed or it is obscured by some pathology here it has to be posterior so i keep looking at the normal anatomical structures this is the 
aortic line that I see here. This is how it would go here. Now, what I do is I look at the trachea, rotation, medial end of clavicles, paratracheal stripes. Then I look at the mediastinum. Is it normal in contour? Is there any widening? Look at the aortic contour. Is it okay? Then I go down, look at the cardiac borders. This is the right atrium, right ventricle, atrial appendage, main pulmonary artery segment. I look at the cardiac borders and I look at the cardiac size. How do I know the cardiac size? You look for the cardiothoracic ratio. Normally, cardiothoracic ratio should be in an adult less than 0.5. What does this mean to me? This means that the cardiac shadow should occupy less than half of the thoracic diameter. Less than half of the thoracic diameter. So I take a quick look. If I'm in a doubt, I would measure, but usually it is all a visual impression for me. This is a normal cardiac size. And then I look at the diaphragms. Right diaphragm is supposed to be higher than the left. So I look at the diaphragmatic position, the contour. Am I able to see till the CP angle? This is the CP recess. Although this is a little bit cut on this side, but I'm able to appreciate till here. Right diaphragm is higher than the left because the car heart is sitting on the left diaphragm and it is pushing it down. At the same time, I make it make a point to look at the structures below the diaphragm. This is the fundic and the splenic flexure here. So this is normal to see here, here, and you should not be seeing here on the below the right diaphragm. I look at the CP recess. If there is any blunting, I make a note of it, and I make it a point here that I follow the cardiac, I follow the chest wall on both sides till the top, till the top, and I compare the chest wall on both sides. So what I've done is actually I started in the middle, look at the mediastinum, look at the heart, go out, look at the diaphragms, go up back. Okay. Now what I do is once I have come up again, now my eye, I will keep comparing both sides one by one because I know there are two lungs, I can compare the pathologies. Lung is supposed to be filled with air, so air looks black on a chest film. If there is a pathology, either there will be less air, so it would look white, or it would have more air, it would look more black. For example, emphysema would be more black, pneumothorax would be more black, pneumonia would be white. So this is how, you know, in my mind, I have placed my pictures. So what I do is, I compare the upper zone to the opposite upper zone. Upper zone. I can see some markings, these are normal to be seen here, but I should not see the lung markings beyond in the lateral one third. So I keep um, uh, my eye on this. Are these comparable? Comparable, comparable. I compare the upper zone, middle zone and lower zone on both sides and I find they are all comparable. There is no asymmetry anywhere, there is no increased air or decreased air anywhere. So that is how I will look at them. Then I look at the bony cage once more. Now I, I look at the chest wall once more, look at the clavicle, look at the scapulae. If there is any tumor, any destruction which I am missing, is there a cervical rib I am missing? And look at the apex once more because apex are difficult to appreciate and you may miss something. Look at the apex once more, look at the hilum once more. These are the hidden areas and look at the below the diaphragm once more. So usually people or medical graduates, what they miss on a chest film is they miss out findings which are outside of the lungs because they think chest x-ray is only lungs and they miss out on the bony cage. While I do not write my report till the time I see the bony cage, apex and below, hyl hilum, compare the hilum and compare the below the diaphragm again. This is the how the hilar shadow is seen. Both the hilar shadows, if you look at this hilar shadow, it is slightly concave towards the outside and they look symmetrical in density. You should always compare the hilar for shape as well as density. They should be comparable. This hilar shadow is predominantly vascular in a normal person. It is made up of pulmonary artery and a bit of it is contributed by the upper lobe veins. Upper lobe veins. Another thing to remember is it is easier to identify the right descending pulmonary artery as compared to the left. So usually the diameter of the right descending pulmonary artery has been used as a criteria for pulmonary plethora. So this is how the chest x-ray is normally seen. Let us look at the lateral film now. Lateral film, when I look at a lateral film, I look for the vertebra, sternum. Now look at something very interesting. The density of air, you will see it is more and more lucent as I go towards the base. Suppose somebody has a lower lobe pneumonia, what would happen? This would look more dense. So I look at the density gradient. This is how it should be normally. It should look more lucent. I look at the sternum. I look at the retrosternal space, retrocardiac space. If there is right ventricular hypertrophy, this would obliterate. If there is a mediastinal mass, I look for it. 
and I look at the diaphragmatic contour, this is the right diaphragm, this is the left diaphragm. How do I know this is the right diaphragm? Because right diaphragm is complete on a lateral film, while left diaphragm is incomplete. Because heart is sitting on the anterior part, so you cannot appreciate the anterior part. So this is what we see on a lateral film. And final message to everybody would be that please make sure whenever you are interpreting a chest film, don't hurry on to it, do not hurry on to the pathologies. Always, always, always make a rule that you will follow your own dictum and make a checklist in your mind. Have I seen everything? Have I seen the lungs? Have I seen the mediastinum? Have I seen the hilum, apex, bony cage, below the diaphragm? And you will not miss findings. Thank you very much. Thank you.